Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy. At the end of a long week, and um, I can't say that actually. <laughs> now that I think about it, I had Monday off. At the end of a short week that seemed long. And um, last night I finally got around to something that I've been meaning to do. And that is doing a little thinking about the root chakra and <clears throat> asking myself and the cards, um, how do I not feel safe? So this rumination, and this is my red nose, is partly just old lady red nose and partly because of allergies, allergies, allergies. Um, so it came about, um, or was, I would say, triggered by seeing um, the, one of Aline Eugenie's videos, and I think it was one of her um, Shakti energy videos that um, we had a little conversation afterward about um, You know, how, you know, she sees drawing, how she draws up the energy and how it spreads out and, you know, just, you know, you kind of have to have that root connection. And she was talking about that root connection and how it, um, she feels like it's always there, um, even from birth or, uh, anyway, <clears throat> and I'm thinking... So why do I not seem to have that? Um, especially since I would say that at least in the past I was I was very root chakra, and I even watched uh, last night. Uh, there's a woman who has a series in which she talks about each of the chakras and how people can kind of exhibit or she was associating certain personality types with the chakras and saying that that personality type um, indicates somebody that has a very active um, chakra of, of the given sort that she would be talking about. So if you're exhibiting root chakra, you know, characteristics, then the idea is that you would have a very um, active root chakra, you know, a healthy active root chakra. Um, and so when I was first looking at some, I don't know how the specific issue of safety came up, but I remember thinking at first, well, yeah, I, I feel safe. I don't feel unsafe. And, but for some reason that just stuck with me and kind of converted into, well, how, how do I not feel safe? <laughs> so it's like going from I'm okay to, gosh, maybe I'm not okay. Uh, but in the end, I think that that was not, I mean, sometimes that kind of conversion can be a little bit pathological in nature, you know? It's like, well, why can't you just be okay? Um, <clears throat> What certainly remains true is that, like, I feel safe in my house, despite even reasons maybe why I shouldn't be. <laughs> I feel safe in my house. Um, you know, I feel, except for some things that will come up in the cards, you know, I feel relatively at home in the world. Um, I, I tend to be hermitish and... But I'm not afraid of going out. I mean, you know, I don't feel anxiety when I go out the door. There's nothing like that. Um, so, so I had to sort of think again and uh, just kind of hold the question, let it just sort of bounce around up there and kind of have that... <laughs> I would say a questioning awareness. So just looking to see if there's anything that indicates, and this has been over the course of a, uh, at least two weeks, um, 
And I did notice last week, especially, um, my financial scarcity was pretty strongly tweaked by something. And, um, and it was something that made me realize that I hadn't made an adjustment from my past job and my past financial situation to my financial situ situation now. Um, and it also made me realize that even though I am in a different situation, I still don't feel financially safe. And there's absolutely good reasons for that. Utterly and completely good reasons for that. <laughs> but, but it is something where... You no, know, so I don't feel like a direct threat to, so that's what I've been trying to suss out is what are things that are not direct threats, not adrenaline rush kinds of threats, but things that, that create an underlying feeling of not being completely safe in the world um, where I'm at. And so that was one of them that came out to me was pretty glaring. It's like, all right, well, there's something to realize and, um, and understand. And, you know, I think that's just a matter of, of time. And over time, um, assuming I continue, you know, with the same job and et cetera, that, um, or, you know, something that makes even more money at any rate, that, it could even improve, you know, and and I feel like um, although my financial situation isn't healed, it isn't safe, it's headed in that direction, and I know what to do to get it there. So I do feel safe and confident in that regard. It's just a matter of keeping the job and keeping my health so I can keep the job. And so yesterday, I just feel like, Imagine, I feel like I have dog hair on my nose. How could that be with, with four dogs? <laughs> um, I sat down on my floor, getting as root as I could in my house, <laughs> and I got out the Osho Zen tarot and pretty much was asking it, you know, how do I feel unsafe? How do I feel unsafe in my life? And um, <clears throat> it gave me a bunch of cards. Essentially, I just kept pulling cards until I found one that indicated something I was sure I was really not feeling unsafe about, which was creativity. When I reached the creativity card, I thought, okay, great. <laughs> Finally, I don't feel like I, I don't feel unsafe in regards to my creativity. <clears throat> so the first card that came up, was this one, slowing down. So the way, this is actually a fairly positive card in the, um, if you read the guidebook. But when I look at that, you know, I think of um, my health. And so it's not really my age, it's my health. So when you have Lyme disease, which is a disease of fatigue and tiredness, when I start to feel tired, that feels dangerous to me. So when I have to take a nap, like if I feel really heavy and I have to take a nap, there isn't just, oh, well, maybe I'm coming down with a cold, you know, and you, you just do what you have to. For me, that triggers all of this stuff that's like, oh, my God, I hope it's not the Lyme disease. What antibiotic should I be taking? You know, what, you know, is this in, there's also right now, there's this issue, which is that the last time that I worked full time, I could only do it for three months. And by three months, and that was like, that was about 10 years ago. And so I could work for three months. And at the end of that three months, I was just done. I could not do it anymore. And I had, and that wasn't even 40 hours full time. That was 30 hours full time. Um, and so I had to back out of that arrangement, go back to the part-time. And so it was really important to me when I hit that three-month mark on this job. And I'm about to, well, I guess I just, yeah, that would have been January, so 
I think I just passed the four month mark and I think I'll be I think I'll be fine <laughs> but oh my lord you know um, so yes this this slowing down I don't feel safe um, I'm not a high energy person etc I mean I never particularly was but at least I was normal <laughs> and um, but yeah so slowing down actually makes me feel unsafe and I almost always will I do have ups and downs so it's almost inevitable that I will have these moments where I am slowing down or something is starting to malfunction and I do have to go back on antibiotics so yes that makes me feel unsafe um, so postponement just the word this was just a great brutal deck to use for this particular exploration um, well, this can be a lot of things um, but to me this figure is looking to the future and maybe what you want to do in the future and I'm always postponing things having to postpone things um, And the reason that I do that is kind of, you know, it's the, it's this fear. It's this, you know, uncertainty. And so, um, and there is the aspect too, I don't know if it's in the other cards or not, but it came up through something else. Um, I think I was, I was thinking about the world card. Uh, that came up as my card of the month and um, my Rider Waite Smith card of the month and and I think it was something I was listening to again last night and I thought yeah there is that aspect because I used to be um, a hiker you know I used to be a hiker and walker um, not much in the way of backpacking because again I, I just don't have the physical fitness but I don't feel safe anymore in the woods it's not because of the bears it's not because of the mountain lions it's because of ticks ticks is what gave me the bite and then after I was you know through the trauma the first time and then I had gotten I guess I had a gallbladder surgery and um, not too long after that like a couple weeks after that actually was went on a hike in the woods and got bitten again and then went down the, and I don't even know if it was the tick bite or just the surgery and, and the way that messes with your immune system but um, so yes I am very shy of going out into the woods so that is one way I feel unsafe is, you know, I know the way my body reacts to tick bites and so, and it's not just, you know, it's, it's, it's what's in the tick. And we would like to think that not every tick has that bacterium, but <clears throat> it doesn't, it doesn't look good <laughs> for me and for me and ticks. Um, so it's interesting to look at this complex of issues that I have in in terms of well what solution you know where could I live that that would be less of an issue and certainly getting out of the south would be huge um, that's part of it but I think ticks are a lot of places now um, drier climates I think of drier climates as having tick season um, <clears throat> when I was in Montana uh, the, the only time when I was living there, the only time you really had to watch for ticks was um, like March through June. And after that, um, there was a long season where I, ne I would never see a tick. Um, but anyway, onward. Friendliness. So this... Um, immediately made me think of uh, <clears throat> network friendly network of people um, I have two 
at the outside four people I could in this area near me that and one of them is like 30 minutes away that I could call on in a tricky situation now I know that there are other people other kind generous um, big-hearted people that are kind of in an extended network that would do what they could to help me out but but really only four people I can think of that I would be comfortable calling um, and you know that's to me when you're getting older that's a little too few <laughs> um, yeah so so to me this is having a network being part of a network a friendly network um, as opposed to uh, the usual two of cups which would be more close friend friendships um, or romantic relationships it's just um, yeah feeling connected I don't like those branches are intertwined and connected and that I don't have a I don't have a, a local network like that and that and that is because I am somebody with health problems and I'm older um, that is that is unsafe it is not a safe situation and I'm aware of it I'm aware that it's not um, so do I fret about it all the time well no not I don't because I'm not doing too much to <laughs> to amend a situation um, and I'm not sure that it's amendable here really just because I am so outside of the norm in an area where norm is very important okay so we have this beyond illusion now this one I'm I could well I don't know I'm not I'm not 100 percent on this one um, in terms of understanding what it's alluding to um, the only thing I could think and I, that doesn't seem very root chakra to me is as somebody who can build castles in the sky if um, not maybe trusting whether or not I am basing decisions on illusions or something like that um, it could also be feeling like um, like security the security I'm starting to develop with this job etc could be an illusion um, and I can see it meaning something like that like in other words here it is it seems like I'm headed you know in a good on a good trajectory <laughs> in terms of security um, but then wondering if you know how easy it is for a tower moment to occur you know do you know do, do I feel like I'm good at my job um, at most aspects yes I think tolerably enough you know um, but that does that you know does that in any way mean that I'm not vulnerable in my job no it doesn't because you know the person who hired me I don't know how long she'll be in that position and I don't know what the next person you know whether I would get along with the next person etc um, there are other aspects that um, have turned out to not be what I was hoping for but so I guess that would be my interpretation of that as being illusion um, again this is not the way they describe it in the um, in the book which is more 
spiritual and blissful. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm going a lot by the wording here. So this one, stress. And there's the illusion, you know, you think that you've got it and it's coming, you know, there's somebody down there poking your balloon. Um, yeah, and that's just pretty much a yeah. When um, I first got to the point where my doctor, my Lyme disease doctor, my specialist, was telling me, you know, I don't think you need to come and see me all the time anymore. I, th I think you've got this. And I was feeling pretty confident, too. It's like, you know, we've done some heavy-duty antibiotic stuff, and it's like it wasn't reacting like normal. And it's like, all right, let's, you know, it's time to move along. It was many years ago. <laughs> And I remember he said, it's really important to avoid stress. And all I could think, you know, kind man that he is and wonderful doctor that he is, all I could think was, I'm, you know, I'm financially sunk, you know, at that point. Um, my, you know, my parents were paying for a lot of my stuff. Um, and he's, I didn't have very much saving, but it was all gone. And, um and not able to function completely even even though we were like well whatever's left whatever's continues to go on doesn't seem to be the Lyme disease um, and so I mean I'm an inherently stressed position <laughs> so and and so this is definitely stress makes me feel unsafe because I don't have this and because I worry about triggering this. And so, yeah, just the potential for stress. Um, and there is, I'm finding at this point, which could just be new job stuff, because this job will be a new job for a full year, because its cycle is pretty much a full year. Um, that this job is more stressful. It's not by any means always stressful. I do think it's a good job for me, at, um, but but yes, any any time having to juggle things. This also reminds me of the stress of living. Actually, at this point, with the four dogs, the two cats, the house. Um, the things that are falling apart in the house, the things that need to get done that haven't been done for years because I didn't have the money to do them and now I don't have really the energy to do them. All of that stuff is stressful and it makes me feel, I think it triggers my, my money stress, which we don't really have an example of the money stress here. So pretty much the Zen, the Osho Zen Tarot was telling me, okay, I understand that you realize <laughs> that, that your financial you know, situation makes you feel unsafe. Now I'm going to show you everything else that makes you feel unsafe and why you've got root chakra problems. <laughs> so, feeling unsafe. What could be more unsafe than this position right here? So, this is, card is called Schizophrenia. And I think it's um, supposed to be, you know, trying to join two things and stretching yourself way too thin to try to um, join two things. And to me, that might just be work and everyday life, all of all of the juggling things we were just talking about. Um, but, you know, I can, I don't feel as mentally stressed as schizophrenia um, would indicate. Um, but I do, I don't necessarily feel stretched thin so much as I realize that I can't do this, which means that I need to find help when I'm in this situation. And 
So, yeah. I feel like that too might be like being stretched between um, my own health and taking care of everything. You know, taking care of the animals, taking care of my house, and working. So it's like all of those things would be one. Taking care of my house, the dogs, my health, or my, uh, my work, all of that would be one of these, and my health would be the other and trying to kind of cover them both, um, you know, making sure that I'm not overdoing it. Traveling. So yes, this is another way in which I feel unsafe, literally, um, because of this. So. And, un, you know, unsafe, not in the sense of, um, I mean, there is the pus, you know, breaking down, but I, I don't think of that so much. I do think of it a little bit these days. Um, you know, it used to be, it's like, well, you know, pre-Lyme disease. If I break down, I can walk wherever, you know. Um, you know, I've traveled across the United States from... Gosh, I guess it was Oregon. Was it Oregon to Michigan? No, because then I was I was in Montana, so it was just Montana. Anyway, across the country in an old truck, and at one point even it, um, it was on the verge of dying, and it was just ridiculous. But anyway, I don't think I think there was a time. It, in one of those ventures where I did feel a little unsafe, like, you know, please truck, make it to this town, okay, don't strand me here. But, um, but you know, I'm not naturally, I'm not naturally stressed when traveling. But since having Lyme disease, it is stressful for me to travel. I don't feel safe because I worry that I won't be able to stay awake. So, um, and it's been some years now since I've had to worry too much about that. Um, but that concern still lingers. Um, you know, I've driven 12 hours at a stretch pre-Lyme disease. And, and I don't like to go past three. And six is stretching it for me now. You know, if I'm planning to be driving for six hours, I have strategies <laughs> for staying awake and for taking breaks and, and all of this stuff in order to to get me through where I need to go. And I don't plan lengths that would take usually more than six or six and a half hours of driving to do because to me that's getting dangerous. But for a long time it was three hours and even three hours of being on the road was it required strategy and you know and so yeah last one letting go and to me you see you've got these drops sitting there and the jewels dropping um to me this is this is like future or pending unsafeness um, my wonderful parents have lasted a long time. They're not going to last forever, <laughs> you know. So that's kind of the... And there is a level. There, because um, actually none of, neither of my siblings, neither me or any of my siblings, um, had children. So there is no there is no family further down. There's cousins, you know, and the cousins, children, etc. But I'm not close to any of them. And so, you know that that the loss of my parents in our nuclear family, um, 
It is. It is a root chakra thing. It's family, and it's and it's a loss of um, like a third of the families will be gone when they go. So. Um, So yeah, so I just got root chakra issues up, down, sideways, <laughs> practically every possible way. And so I did see um, something that I like that I'm going to try as a visualization. So I tried a little a little bit ago to try the whole visualization. I, I don't seem to be able to do very good at putting roots down and or even bringing things up right now. My whole the whole chakra system that for a while, those who are familiar with my channel, um, I was very populated with with. Um, power animals in my chakras, and you know, if I were, if I just thought about a chakra, boom, an animal would, or here, <laughs> kind of a thing, you know. Um, nowadays, when I do that, I'm kind of empty. So I did that the other day because I realized um, that I hadn't, that I hadn't had that sense for for a couple months anyway, and so I I laid down and just tried to visualize and there's like nobody's home nobody's home but then I got um, <clears throat> my true kind of spirit animal totem animal and this is how these things work right so what I got was these great big you know bear paws like walking on my body <laughs> you know and it's like, okay, to me that was kind of a message, you know, kind of an I am here message, and you don't need anybody else, I am here. So, um, which was interesting, I haven't had that experience with bears. So to me that's, um, that strong experience with the bear for a long time, and so, so to me that's a positive thing, and in the past, um, I had asked my sister when I started being very populated and, you know, if I thought about a health problem, a little power animal would pop up, you know, and, um, and I had asked her because she'd had more experience in these, in, in people, she has more friends and is with a group of people or associates with a group of people who would be more likely to have some knowledge of this, but in the end I think she found something online, but, um, so I was saying, is this common? Are you only supposed to need one? Why, why do I have so many? And she said that, um, and I think I found this somewhere else later, that that is most common when somebody really needs help. <laughs> when you really need help. It's just, it's more than one. Um, so I look at this depopulate, you know, depopulate, depopulating, depopulating, of my of my chakras actually is a positive thing um you know and especially with bear kind of showing up in a very assertive sort of way um and but i still was not able to have not been able to sit and like make an earth connection <laughs> i couldn't do it um not with roots and everything i tried more than once but I saw something today on a video, and so I, during my my work, I listen to kind of spacey music, and a lot of times with these spacey music things, um, they will have visuals. Um, and so I happen to just be, you know, going to a website that's work related. But as I, you know, as I bring up the web browser. You know, there's my, there's my music playing, essentially. And what, what it was showing was they were reversing somebody who had, um, who had let, I guess it was kind of letting sand sift through their fingers. So they had picked up sand and they were just letting it run through their fingers. So they were reversing that. 
So the sand was just sort of coming up and filling their hand. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try that next time. So probably tonight I will try visualizing maybe sand because that's easy and that's what I saw. You know, and I think I'm just going to try to give myself some backbone. So I'm going to try to bring the sand up up and see if it, I can get it to sort of fill my backbone, <laughs> fill, my, fill me up, and then, and I don't know if I'll just try that or if I'll try to then bring some heat up with it, I don't know, anyway, wish me luck, and that's the end of my root chakra ruminations for now, all right, everybody, take care, bye-bye. Feel free to leave comments, you know, your own experiences, you know, recommendations for me and my issues. Um, anyway, thanks. If you've made it this far, take care. Bye-bye.